We're back. I got Juliet with me. Hi. Hello. I'm out here in Squamish. I'm even going to tell everybody that I said Chilliwack on the first take. But, <laughs> but we're in Squamish in actuality. Wow. A beautiful place. Love this place. Um, we talked a little bit about your journey here, but uh, tell the viewers a little bit about how did you end up here? Hmm. Well, I was living in North Vancouver and I had uh, come to Squamish for the very first time to attend an uh, international shamanic conference that happens here every year. And um, while I was away, my hot water tank blew in the, in the apartment that I was at. And I came back and there was flooding all over the place and, um, you know, some extensive and immediate repairs needed to happen and so I had, I, and it was going to take I think three weeks or something, so I had to, I had to move out, I had to move out all my things and uh, I searched and searched uh, for a, a rental and the only place that came up was, was here in Squamish, so I, I always say that, you know, the spirit just kind of kicked my butt to get me up here, so that's how I got here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Sometimes it works out. It worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I immediately felt um, like this was the home I'd been looking for. Do you feel things energetically here that are a little bit different than in town? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Do you think it's just the, 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 the wilderness or is it the, uh, maybe uh, indigenous energy or w w mm. do, you have, do you have a sense of what that might be? I feel like it's probably all of those things. Um, <clears throat> definitely the definitely the history of this place for sure. Every every land um, feature seems so rich um, rich in history. Um, but even if you didn't know it, you can just sort of feel this uh, this ancient history that that it has somehow different than other places. Um, I do think that the, there's a high number of people that live here that are like-minded as well, so you know they can have some of that. And and I have you know heard people talk about how you know the the chief right the it's a it's a granite monolith you know you've, so you have that as sort of a beacon. You have this convergence of um, wind and water, and a lot of the mountains are very pyramid-shaped you know that surround the place. So I feel like there's sort of geographically a bit of a power spot happening here as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know I've camped out here many years ago, like maybe six or seven years ago, and uh, had some uh, really interesting dreams, for instance. So mm -hmm. um, we were by the river and, and the salmon were running and the eagles were here and you just, you felt a lot of, I don't know, life force. There is. Yeah, yeah, there really is. There's a lot, you know. If you're if you're one who um, watches for omens or works with animals, you know, in any way, even spiritually, you're you're bound to see them. Bears are regular, bobcats are regular, eagles, deer, elk, all of those things are just <clears throat> they're just so present here. So um, if you're connected in any of those ways, then you're it's much easier to receive a lot of messaging, anyways, than perhaps in a city or something. Right. Yeah. Right. So one of the things that I uh, have been drawn to um, is your uh, your shamanic path, mm -hmm. and uh, I've mentioned this in other videos that it uh, you know it's it's part of my heritage too. So I'm a, I'm curious, and, mm -hmm. and I've kind of dabbled in a few things and done some circles, but I. Uh, it always fascinates me, and, and I'm thinking to myself, um, do you do you feel uh, with all the, the the sort of the things that are happening in the world? Wh where do you think shamanism fits in in all of this, and wh what mm. can it do to the world? How can it he help heal the world? Mm -hmm. That's a really good, really good question. Um, <clears throat> I feel like there's a, you know, I have a couple of answers to that. Um, the, the main part of it for me is um, 
for myself as well as encouraging it for others and supporting others to find the way that they can really connect to their own self, really tend to their own soul, um, heal themselves, and then also heal the connection that they have to the land, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, it's self-supporting, but by taking care of our, our own selves, you know, we're still having a, a bit of a ripple effect, right? Whether it's energetically or just with the people that we're meeting and the company we're keeping, this sort of thing. So by tending to our own selves, we're also um, healing the world in a lot of those ways, right? Um, but then, you know, there's also this, this piece that it's, it's really a time-tested way, a way of living, a way of being, and we've really lost a lot of soul in our culture. You know, there's, we're pretty surface dwelling, you know, having to work and struggle about bills and there's media and all of these things. So this kind of brings some of the, the humanness back, you know, um, some of the real. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I really, I really feel that, um, some of the atrocities that are happening in the world, um, they're, they're really spurning a lot of people um, out of this sort of days of just working and getting by and not really going deep with anything. It's really bringing a lot of people together. It's really bringing a charge to it. You know, if you think about um, Standing Rock, you know, that was absolutely incredible, you know, to witness from afar for me. but. Um, the level of, of healing that happened there among people and, and the global sort of unification for the most part. I mean, obviously there's, there's people who are not on that same page or a same thought, but, um, you know, I think it's just really a, a nice balance or a catalyst to some of these things. So some of it's waking us up and some of it is by working in these ways, you know, we are having an effect, you know, for the better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always felt that uh, also uh, anytime uh, light workers gather, you're 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 moving matter. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think our our thoughts move matter. It's mm -hmm. it's not just in our head. And so, uh, you know, when you're holding space, what are you doing? You're really just using your imagination mm -hmm. to channel your energy. So. Um, you know, if you're if you're someone that believes that the planet literally has, uh, you know, it's alive in a sense, mm -hmm. then it's going to feel you. Mm -hmm. It's going to, especially mm -hmm. when we all gather. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Oh, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Um, you know, and as much as I'm sort of into this sort of realm, like this sort of woo-woo sort of side of things or spiritual side of things, you know, I'm also I really appreciate the science behind it as well too. So if you look at just electromagnetic frequencies and the frequencies off our bodies and off the earth and this sort of thing and you know you can really measure if you had the right tools you can really measure these changes that that can occur and some of the work that I've done <clears throat> I've done some work with um, Sandra Ingerman where there was about you know 500 people around the world and you know we went through this this transfiguration um, ceremony and <clears throat> they had a I think it's called a, a GVD camera that um, took the 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 electromagnetic imprint and image of different um, foods like uh, canned corn. Um, I think fishy crackers was one of them. Some really sort of heavily processed foods, you know, before and then after. And you know, in this um, this method, this way of working. Um, nobody knew exactly what the items were. We weren't sending any healing to it, you know. It was just sort of um, working with this space and the, and the divine energy that's just latent in the in in the universe, and <clears throat> and the, the the changes was measurable and and absolutely fantastic, you know. Um, and I and I uh, some people would probably laugh when they hear me say this again, but I I always bring it back to the this rice experiment that that I encourage everybody to do where you get two jars of cooked rice and you put ignore on one jar and you put it up on a shelf and you put love on the other one and you know every day you send it some love and you hold it and you kiss it and you you know even just look at it and go ah oh, nice rice you know and then the changes even just after a couple of months you know the the ignored rice just rots and the love rice stays looking 
I mean, you wouldn't want to eat it, but it, it's looking good and healthy and white and individual grains where the other one's turning to sludge. So, you know, it's very simple, easy ways to go, oh, I do have an effect on the world, just simply by um, being in a place of love or sending love out. So, you know, when you are feeling helpless or powerless against some of these atrocities, you know, it sounds kind of perhaps so simple, but it's it really is powerful and it's measurably so just to send love out.